How can an insurance company afford to pay you what an index like the S&P 500 gains without having money actually invested in the S&P? How can they do that? By the end of this video episode, you will understand why an IUL issuing insurance company has the wherewithal to pay you more when the market goes up, but protect you from losing principal when the market has downturns. This is incredible. And unfortunately, a lot of financial advisors do not understand what you're about to learn. So I'm Doug Andrew and I've been helping people optimize assets and minimize taxes now for more than 48 years. My favorite financial instrument is a max funded IUL. Now IUL stands for indexed universal life. And so in other episodes, uh, you maybe have learned that an IUL policy is an insurance contract where you're structuring it primarily for living benefits. You're taking the least amount of insurance that the IRS will let you get away with, so to speak, and put it in the most money premiums that the IRS allows as fast as they allow. Now you're actually doing what I call a backdoor approach. When people would come to me, they wanted to set up a, a portfolio, so to speak, where they could uh, accumulate money for long-term goals, such as retirement or college funding for their kids or working capital for their business. And they wanted to make sure their money was liquid so they could access it anytime they needed it without penalties or taxes. Uh, they wanted it to be safe, especially when the stock market would go down or we had recessions. They wanted to earn predictable rates of return that were far better than banks and credit unions. They wanted to earn a rate of return that was at least 5% greater than the inflation rate at the time, which fortunately we've been able to do uh, ever since 1980, okay? But the tax-free accumulation was like icing on the cake. You mean, I'm earning money tax-free and when I take it out, it's still tax-free. And when I die and I leave it behind, it's still tax-free. And I go, you got it. So that's the beauty behind max funded insurance contracts. So then people say, well, okay. So if I use indexed universal life, if you have watched any other episodes, basically you have the choice um, every year if you want, of linking to an index or indices on an IUL policy. So many times I'll use an example of, let's say you have a million dollars of cash value in your IUL policy. Now, it doesn't matter if you have 100,000, 10,000 or 10 million, you can extrapolate from my example. If I have a million in there and I feel like the economy is gonna go down, I can just say, pay me the interest you're earning on your general account portfolio. We're in a low interest environment as of the recording of this episode. So maybe it's only 4%. The insurance company is in business to make a profit. So they maybe need one of those percentage points for them, but they'll pay me maybe three. So 3% on a million is 30 grand and it's tax free, which is better than having my money in a bank earning 1% and that's taxable. Okay. But if I feel like, golly, inflation now is, is seven or eight or nine or 10 or like in the year 2021, it was actually over 15%. Gas went through the roof, used cars, everything. You had to earn higher than 15%. Well, many of our clients locked in gains that year of 25%, 61% because you can outpace inflation. I answer how we can do that in another episode. In this one, I'm answering the question, well, how can the insurance company afford to pay you uh, what the S&P does if they're not investing your money in the S&P? Because they hear me say this, okay, your million dollars has to stay in the insurance company safe, earning 4%. Well, then how can they afford to pay you eight or 12 or 61% if they can't use your money in the market? I go, okay, let me explain it this way. Your million is safe in the insurance company. You are not authorizing them when you link to an index to take one dime of that million dollar principal and invest it in the market. It's in the insurance company earning four. And then people jump ahead and say, well, yeah, so how can they afford to pay eight or 12 or 61% if, if they're only earning four? I'm going, hold on, 
If I link to an index, I'm saying you're earning 4%, that's 40,000. Take that 40,000 and you don't have to keep it on hand to pay me that. I'm willing to get zip if the market crashes. I can relinquish that 4% interest and you take that 4% on a million dollars, that's 40 grand, and you can do whatever you need to do with that to have the wherewithal to pay me uh, whatever the uh, index that I choose or indices does. Well, they're, they're big boys and girls. They wouldn't offer it if they didn't know they could afford to do it. What do they do with the 40,000? They buy upside options in the S&P or the Dow Jones or the Russell 2000, whatever indices I chose. Now, you don't have to understand options to understand this. They know what they're doing. They're the number one purchaser of options in the world. They buy them hourly. They, they, they used billions and even trillions of dollars all the time doing this. So they're buying upside options. Now, based upon the price of options and what they're doing, if the S&P went up 8%, that 40,000 worth of options doubles. They have 80,000 to pay you. Maybe if it tripled, it would go up to 120,000. But based upon the price of options, maybe they, they have to cap you. Well, we'll pay you up to 12%, but if the S&P goes up 16, sorry, we're only gonna pay you 12. That's called a cap. What's the trade-off if they cap you? Well, if the market loses like 40%, like 2008, you don't lose because your money was not in the market. Just the interest on your million was in options. So they would have the money if the market went up to pay you. But if the market goes down, those options just expire worthless at the end of that year. But you didn't lose your million. That's why zero is your hero. Now, what about years where they have paid 25% or 61%? Well, that's where we go, okay, we think from March of 2020 to March of 2021, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the market dropped 30%. Well, anybody in the financial services industry knows that if you start down here, the chance of you making money from this point up to here is much greater than starting here. And so when the market goes down, we, we tell our clients with IUL policies, link to a one year point to point, no cap. Now the trade-off is with no cap, they're gonna subtract 5% off the top. So March of 2020 to March 2021, the market went up 66.33%. They take 5% off of that and our clients netted 61.33%. Now those types of opportunities don't happen all the time, but often enough, that when you have an IUL professional that understands this, how to rebalance your portfolio, you don't have to worry about how can the insurance company afford to pay me 61%. Yeah, we had a client that started out with over 800,000 in March of 2020, but made 535,000 in one year, March of 2021, he had 1,387,000. He locked in that gain, even if the next year the market dropped, he would not lose that half a million he made the year before. That's called lock in and reset, which if you don't understand that, watch other episodes that explain that. But when people say, how can the insurance company afford to do that? It didn't cost them anything. They bought options based upon what you chose, a one year point to point with no cap. And so they know what they're doing and they had the wherewithal if the market went up and they made their 5% off of the profit on the back end. But our clients netted 61%. But when people say, how can they afford to do that when they're only earning four? It's because you're letting them take the 4% interest and buy upside options, which protects them if the market goes down, they don't owe you 4%. But if the market goes up, they owe you more, but they'll have the wherewithal to pay you more or else they wouldn't offer it. It's that simple. So if this is making a sense or you're going, wow, I need to see some examples of this with actual history. And by the way, when you meet with an IUL professional, uh, rather than just plugging in a hypothetical interest rate of 6%, because they always, you know, are, are told to show very conservative rates of return. You want to under promise and then over deliver because even though they may only show you 6% in actuality, I have averaged 9.62%. But there's some years I, I've made 16, 25% and higher. Other years, I don't make anything but I don't lose. And so when you average it all out, yeah, you'll probably end up with somewhere between six to 10% tax-free rates of return, which means your money will double probably every, you know, five to 10 years tax-free. 
But be sure you understand this by meeting with an IUL professional who understands how to do this and choose the options and rebalance your portfolio. You'll understand those terms and you can study them in this book. This is like the textbook. Uh, it's 300 pages. I have co-authored this with my two sons. It's called The Laser Fund. A laser fund is a properly structured maximum funded IUL policy. Having said that, I would say that 99% of IUL policies would not be deemed a laser fund because they're not structured correctly or funded properly. So you want to meet with a professional that knows what they're doing and it passes liquidity, safety, rate of return tests with flying colors. These are like bars from one to 10. And a properly structured IUL scores the highest score ever compared to other typical places Americans have their money in the market in IRAs of 401ks. These bars would be clear down here with most of those, okay? If you have not claimed your free copy, go to laserfund.com. You contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. You can click on the link below and uh, I'll fire out a copy to you. I'll pay for the book. You just contribute towards the shipping and handling. This side has 200 pages of charts and graphs. This side has 62 actual stories of clients that use IUL policies for everything from retirement planning, college funding for their kids, working capital for business, real estate management, emergency funds, estate planning, pension maximization, all kinds of goals. You'll see why I call it the dream solution, the financial Swiss army knife, and it's my preferred vehicle by far. So when you're in there, you have the opportunity to uh, set up an appointment with an IUL professional, but be respective of their time. Watch some of these so they don't have to sort of spoon feed you stuff that you could learn on your own. It would be far better for you to start out the conversation at this level instead of down here at this level uh, if you don't understand some of the basics. That's the purpose of these educational videos. So here's to your brighter future.